Hi, I'm Johannes Pukela. Um, I was born back in 1966 in Soweto. Yeah, grew up in Soweto, obviously. Um, back then, I didn't know whether I'd end up uh, doing what I'm doing today. Um, I obviously, work as an artist. Why Johannes Pukela is important, not only at this moment, but throughout his career and his practice, ever since he graduated from art school and started a professional career as an artist, is because his work participate in this constant and continuous and durational work that all of us have to do to tell ourselves who we are. Uh, well, as a painter, I guess from a stylistic mode of expression, that can easily be connected with the fact that, that I, I studied painting, but that doesn't mean I was only doing painting. I was also interested in other mediums, despite the fact that I specialize in painting. And I think that for me, this is the fundamental sort of uh, site where I place Johannes's importance, the importance of his practice. Uh, initially, when I uh, embarked into painting, obviously, the subject matter had to evolve around something that had to do with me, my identity, etc. And um, I had serious problem back then. I didn't know how to actually deal with the issue. Um, but at the end, then I took a bold step and told myself that I'm an artist of African origin. Most interesting about this work is the fact that uh, um, uh, back in the day, so like in the early 80s when I started attending art schools, um, we, we didn't have much resources, so like uh, drawing was like the basic and painting, if we were to do painting, we do a bit of watercolour. Uh, I was often seen as being bad at painting, so I was considered to be really good at drawing. I see myself drawing with paint anyway, you know, so um, my former teacher, the late Julian Sotlali, encouraged me a lot to do more printmaking. He thought it was my thing. And I, I personally wanted to do graphic art. <laughs> I was not interested in art at all. Then I opted into like uh, the very essence of subject matter that I really like. I, these destructions of uh, uh, iconic images I mean, doesn't literally end with like, you know, uh, mutilation of paintings as such, you know, it could be relics, it could be uh, cemeteries. Uh, for instance, you know, there's been like you know, um, an uprising of iconoclasm uh, globally, especially in terms of the statues. It is important for us to look at practices that for many reasons, or for maybe not even many reasons, for, you know, for unknown reasons have been either neglected or undervalued. So I wanted to do art, you know, devoid of my, my cultural background. I wanted to do art as to do with art. You can call it art for art's sake, but I beg to differ. Art can be for art's sake, but no, there's also other issues in it as well. Yeah. You know, the British Sunday Times, yeah, it's sexually published in the Sunday Times. And essentially the article is about um, 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 cannibalism, basically. And they had that headline, eating people is in the horizon. So that's what actually drove me into the, the actual story. And then they had this illustration, almost, um, what do you call it, the uh, engraving, sort of black and white engraving of uh, um, South East Asian uh, native guy assaulting like a, a missionary kind of fellow priest, you know, guy. Uh, I was intrigued by that. And the story was quite exciting uh, in the sense that you know, it was trying to emphasize the fact that uh, cannibalism <laughs> never actually really happened, you know, it was actually invented. Johannes Pokela, for me, is one of the most amazing painters of his generation. He's the force of his narrative, of his pictorial narrative, uh, is so uh, deep and it's so even disturbing in, in many ways that um, it, beca it became obvious for us in, to, uh, to look at him, to uh, invite him for a solo show. And beyond that, Johannes has been silent 
and basically disappeared from the, from the, let me call it the scene for over a decade. decade. And uh, it was just not uh, acceptable for our curatorial team to really uh, let this be. And uh, of course, Zaitz Mocha is located in, in South Africa, in Cape Town. Well, however, our curatorial purview is larger, is Pan-African. And in this Pan-African kind of outlook, South Africa has an amazing role to play, to be in conversation, not only from a South African perspective, but really from a Pan-African perspective. And when you look at it from that perspective, Johannes's work is just outstanding. So I can say one of those uh, guys who were privileged enough to go to FUBA. I was there from 1983 to 86. She eventually led me towards sort of like going to um, for a scholarship in the UK. But the interesting thing about FUBA it was that that particular difficult time when it was a huge sort of political turmoil. Uh, the 80s, so mid 80s was quite dangerous at the time, and. Um, as a student then, you know, like, um, we didn't actually know where we belong. We belong. We didn't know whether we, we, we belong to the sort of revolutionary side of things or purely on the aesthetic side of, of, of life. It's, uh, it's incredible force that is in his practice. It is incredibly bold what he addresses and also the way he really plays with pictures. He plays with the traditions of painting. He plays with and actually even somehow subverts the very, the very ways in which one imagines or pictures a so-called African painter. This is actually the first uh, uh, large-scale work I, I uh, uh, did in South Africa coming back. Uh, this was specifically for uh, the Standard Bank show. Yeah, so this is the work that I kind of thought you know, I should do. In fact, the whole thing started off as one work. It started off as, as this piece. Um, it's based on like some uh, uh, old Dutch genre paintings. So it, in a way, it's all about uh, 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 proverbs, uh, the way of life in the Netherlands back in the 17th century. So, so I got carried on, basically. So I call this tender, loving care. You know. so I got carried away and um, end up with this triptych. Um, yeah, at the end of the two years at the Royal College, you know, and then that's when I started becoming a professional artist. Obviously, the very first. Uh, uh, Breakthrough for me was um, the painting, The Yellow Fall of the Dam. Um, submitted it, the, uh, uh, the British painting by Eno called it John Moss. It's the biggest painting I watched in the UK. To my surprise, I won it. <laughs> I won that. I mean, it's like uh, the first, you know, sort of like uh, uh, foreign artist to win a um, uh, prize in the UK, a painting prize in the UK. So I became some sort of celebrity back then. Um, yeah. Um, and that's how my career kicked off. And this is when I um, embarked into um, this uh, project, you know, which are called um, the, uh, the Virgin Countries, kind of thing. going to war zones. I did that for three years while I was still doing my work, but my priority was uh, going to all these countries. I got to know Johannes through a mutual friend, artist friend, which is uh, Godfrey Donko, uh, with whom we are both very close to. I mean, I consider Gottfried a, a real brother, and, uh, and Gottfried has a very long-standing uh, relationship and uh, collaboration with, uh, with Johannes. And I think that the very first time I was exposed to Johannes' work, was uh, through Gottfried. And, uh, and then subsequently, of course, uh, as, a, as a still young curator back then, I was interested in, uh, in finding out who he is. And luckily, eventually, I think 
uh, that I traveled to South Africa a couple of years later, while Gottfried was also in South Africa and was working with, uh, with Johannes. They were sharing a studio and this is how I, uh, I, I met Johannes and I was just blown away with, uh, with the force of his, uh, of his work. And also I was absolutely intrigued by the way he, he plays with the uh, art historical traditions of painting in many ways. So, because uh, from, a, from a first sight, when you're exposed to Johannes' work, you don't expect it, you know, to be from a black man from Soweto, let's say. And, uh, and, uh, and the more you, uh, you deal, you delve into it, the more you understand how uh, subversive the work is, how critical the work is, how uh, the narrative is so, uh, you know, disturbing, basically. So I, um, and this is why I definitely fell in love with, uh, with the work, with the man, with, uh, you know, with everything about Johannes. Exciting recipe, you see. So it's inspired by actually um, um, a Briar recipe book. <laughs> that I sort of picked up uh, secondhand. It goes back to the 80s. Like I suddenly realized how you know, photography was compared to today. You know, like when everything was all uh, before digital age. It's very interesting looking at those um, uh, Kodak you know, sort of color and everything. Uh, I found the picture quite interesting. So I went through the book. So I wanted to make a painting about uh, um, a bride culture in South Africa. In fact, I was actually inspired by um, the National Bride Day, you know, uh, 2005. But the idea then was to actually produce the work in South Africa because the, the, the cost of transporting work, you know, it's like then quite expensive for me. That's all. When I got to show all these beautiful artworks to fellow South Africans who were in exile that side, you know, they they found uh, my work to be politically unsound. I came all the way here to become an artist, not to uh, be a politician or deal with politicians. Although I can have all those issues in my work, I'm going to do what I want. You know? I can be considered one of the first people to get into um, directly using you know, um, um, Western art or non-African art into my work directly, you know, going back to the mid-80s. Yeah. Santa Claus is Christmas, it's in like winter, whereas here in South Africa, we're in the summer. So it's kind of like taking that break before he goes back, you know, into the snow. Um, obviously, the, the whole idea was like tourism in South Africa and everything. And there he is, getting you know, his washing ready, prepared you know, for his uh, uh, touring. Every art is conceptual. I guess you can say conceptualist in orientation, using paint. Uh, I, mean, I prefer people to look at the work the way they want to see it, to be honest with you. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm, I'm not so comfortable with term, terminologies like that. At one point we had modernist, now you have postmodernist, you know, now you have post postmodernist. You know. I would say like every artwork you now emanates from, ultimately emanates from an idea, you know, of some sort. You know. So I can say rather than conceptual art, conceptualist, you know, maybe, yeah. But I don't particularly view myself following any sort of stylistic mainstream in that sense. Yeah. So this was the first one that I did. I did, I did this one in black and white. You see the child souls are coming from inside. It's been an incredible experience to, and, uh, obviously I have, I have worked on uh, large scale shows before, but uh, uh, it's the first time on a sort of museum type of scale. But I'm, I'm really, really accelerated about doing this project. I'm so happy. And thanks to uh, Storm and Koyo you know, for having made this possible for me. Mm -hmm.